The sounds of this station and Miss Dynamite they on the track, yo, you can't test this. Let me tell them about Bad Bandalera. Oh, 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 oh. We're sitting in the building, we're in Bethnal Green. The, you know, the studio where like a lot of the magic goes down, huh? Yeah, definitely. Like, well, this is like more my writing room. This is where, where we come down and where I sit with the artist or with the writer or the writer and the artist and just start building records, start building ideas and everything. And, and yeah, sometimes if we need a bigger studio, we'll go to another studio, just make it happen, get some live musicians in there. So, yeah, that's, that's where this is where it starts. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the definitely. idea. It's where the magic happens. So we just played Rory Workout, that's Lethal it. Bizzle, Jeremy Temperty, you produced that. Yes. It's got your signature on there as well. I always know when I'm oh, here. Oh, you know, yeah, because, because, yeah, I, because I chopped it up this time. I didn't really, <laughs> put it, I didn't do the whole yeah, distortion. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I know from, I, I know your sound now. Like I can I can hear you oh, know what I mean I know your sound so that what that that's your highest chart in production to date right yeah definitely yeah. Yeah. how did that feel then when you know the the numbers came back and it was like it was, a number eleven was, in the charts it was actually mad you know because um it was a hype like Rari workout was a hype once uh, lethal Snapchat was a whole hype going on about about it and um he's like yo I think you might need a song for it I'm mean, like yeah well mm-hmm. let's do it and I started playing around with some sounds and. I had an idea and I called him. I was like, yo, like I got an idea. You need to listen to this. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, that's sick. And then he came down and we just started doing the record. Mm-hmm. But I thought like it's going to be like a street thing because it's, it's not the obvious hit. It's, it's very, it's quite hard for radio. It's mm-hmm. a bit hard for radio. So I was like, in a club, it might go off. But I don't know if radio is going to take it. And then mm-hmm. it ended up being on like different play- playlists and stuff. I'm like, yeah, oh, that's crazy. So yeah, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I didn't expect it. I'm not gonna lie to that. Yeah, I knew it was a hit. I didn't expect anything of that to happen. So yeah, I'm grateful. I'm sick. So we're counting that you're actually. There's a lot of work that you and Bizzle been doing, yeah. and we're counting five. That like, Rory Workout was the fifth single. True so that. you lot are becoming somewhat of a band. It's like you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. It's like it's like a band, man. How did how did this all start? How did you meet? How did the working relationship begin? Um. Well, I, I, I know business music. I know business. You know, actually, I don't. I didn't know business music. I knew about Mo Fire Crew, the oil thing. I was, I was back in the days, and I was living in Amsterdam at the time still. And it was just like it was a, a big hype. And uh, I got introduced to him by, by my manager, and he was like, "Yeah, you should. You, I should try something." And um, so he just came in the studio. I played him a beat, and it was the drop. Actually, mm-hmm. this is what was that two years ago? This is like two years ago, and I played him the beat, like played him the drop, and it's like, oh, that's sick. It's like leave that for me. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'll keep it. And then we did, um, we did. They got it wrong. That was the first record, and um, yeah, connected. We connected really well, like musically, we connected really well. It's a uh, sick person, like he's a good man. I was like, you know what? Let's just keep working and keep working. And we did the drop, and then we started doing all these records. Mm-hmm. And we're still working, so mm-hmm. yeah. You know, a good relationship, you definitely got your work in, yeah. you know, you're making music that's charting and being received quite well. Yeah. Now, from your perspective, how do you view Bizzle, man? People have always got so much to say about him, you know, pros and cons. He's just a businessman. He's a great businessman. He's a hit maker. They say maybe he's not too lyrical. They say, oh, they write him off and then he comes back. He signs another deal. He's independent. He's doing better than, you know, signed artists. But, you know, from your perspective, man, what's your view on Mr. Lethal Bizzle? Biz. This is my boy, man. Like I, I love the guy, man. He's a sick person. Um, he's just very creative. He he doesn't like when I give him a beat. Uh, it doesn't matter what beat I give him, he'll he'll just kill it. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's not always about like who has the sickest bars or lyrically like killing it with metaphors and everything. It's not about that. You need to make a sick record. Mm-hmm. You need to make a tune that everyone can buy into and that the the. the all the people will like not just the the the, the hip hop heads or the grime heads like oh that's some sick lyrical content or whatever the song needs to be correct mm-hmm. and and that's 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 what he does like mm-hmm. he's he's just fucking sick with oh. sorry he just <laughs> 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 now he's he's sick with that he's mm-hmm. sick with that so yeah so I, I, he's sick I, I love I love the work with him I'll keep working with him like it's just mm-hmm. sick it's just sick because most people most artists you work with they very like. Yeah, we want this. We want a hit. We want. You see this here? Yeah, I want this. Oh, you see this here? I want this. But mm-hmm. it's not. It's not about that, man. It's make what you feel. Make mm-hmm. what you feel. We we made Rowdy work out. We made what we felt. We mm-hmm. we weren't going for the hit. 
And if you feel it and you you believe in it, and and everyone around you believes in it, well, that's the mm -hmm. record. If you make records like oh I need to make it, it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna work. Like none of the records we did are like obvious. Like oh yeah, they go for a hit now. Mm -hmm. Like we never did that. So mm -hmm. I don't do that with any of my records to be honest. Mm -hmm. Now I respect that approach and I respect what you're saying there, but I just feel like maybe in maturity in music and how long you've been in the game and stuff, it's all good having that cult following and that passion but it needs to translate into hits at exactly. some point or you know across the career so you know how, how do you tackle that man because on, on one hand you know you just signed your record deal yeah. as well you, you're going to have pressure in somewhat to, yeah, to have hits, you know <laughs> what i mean but you want to you know feel passionate and and do what you want to do it's, how do you bridge a, that gap man it's it's a hard one you know it's hard to balance it it's hard to balance it out because you still want to stay close to yourself and then at the same time you need to like like compromise a bit to to make sure that radio is gonna like it radio dj is gonna like it and and all, all these people are gonna like your record so it's, you're not really making records for yourself you make it for for the people and 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 i'm fortunate that the music that i like to make for myself like people like it so i'm just like okay i don't have to compromise too much if i have to compromise anything in a song it, it probably is like the time that i'm like it needs to be three minutes or something like something like that mm -hmm. but if it's up to me i'll make an intro for four minutes and stuff to make mm -hmm. a movie but yeah so that i don't know man I'm, I'm cool i'm cool i'll just make what i like and, and the label will tell me like okay well maybe this or that but mm -hmm. till now it's been going well so how does a regular studio session go down do you prefer to be in the studio with the artist that you're making a track with definitely yeah definitely yeah. I, I would love to have the artist i always would want the artist in the in the room because you don't know what kind of vibe uh they're looking for and mm -hmm. i just want to customize the beat i want to customize the record so it's just so they know like okay this is my record i don't i don't want to know like no offense like a britney spears like you come in the room and you just like the song's been written and you just cut mm -hmm. the song i don't really want it like that i like it to be personal and be about you mm -hmm. so you, you're close to the record so yeah mm. so that's that's how i work i mm. prefer working like that obviously you know, you do, you, do you sometimes just send over the beat has that happened much no i never send over the beat yeah so you always need to be yeah. in always I, I i always start from scratch in a session oh for real I always start from scratch okay i never have beats ready if you're ever working with me, don't ask me for beats. I don't have beats ready. Like you need to come in the session. We're gonna talk about what we wanna, what you wanna make, and where you wanna take the song to, and and and, I'll, and we start from scratch. Straight. Yeah, I, I have to because like, the vibe is gonna be different every time you come in a room. Mm -hmm. Even though it's the same room, the vibe is different. So, mm -hmm. so always from scratch. Yeah. The latest single, Bandolero with Miss Dynamite. You obviously, you know, it's your record. She's featuring on your track. It's definitely got that. It's like a fusion between like EDM and, and dancehall, that reggae sound in there. Yeah. Now, you know, I really wanted to ask you how the record was made if you sat down in the studio together. But you told us already that every track you make is always with the artist yeah. in the studio. So, you know, break down how the making of this track went. Um, it was actually the first session I did with Miss Dynamite um we got hooked up and um she came in the studio and I, I had i had this idea for a drop and that was that's the drop now in mm -hmm. the record i had this idea for a drop and i made a drop and i was like well, where's she gonna like sing or rap where's where she's gonna do her her thing and she has this reggae vibe dancehall vibe going on in, mm -hmm. in in most of her songs i was like well let's just try build that in 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 the record as well and everything so edm is nowadays boom 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 i was like let me just flip it and mm -hmm. just do a half time and just make it reggae and see mm -hmm. how, how it works mm -hmm. it wasn't easy because it's edm that goes into reggae it's not happening often mm -hmm. but i guess we pulled it off and she did amazing like with the vocals and it just blended and mm -hmm. that's how, how how it worked did you get involved much with the writing or was it strictly like the production side of I'm, things I'm, I'm always involved in, in, in writing because we always like like go back and forth with ideas and and like okay what what we, what we gonna do i'm a very hands-on producer like i'm mm -hmm. not just leaving someone to write i always have ideas because i hear different melodies and the artist hear different hear, hears different melodies and i just you just go back and forth like okay this 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 let's pick this let's pick this mm -hmm. yeah but dynamite six just that's it. it's mm -hmm. amazing 